Hi, my name is uh, George Dagnino. I'm the coordinator of the Akron Investment Group. This is a group that was started because of the need of uh, some of us of getting together and talk about the market. There is no presentation, there is no speaker. It's just a group of people that are really love the market, love investing, and they want to understand and learn more from each other. This is the only objective of the group. However, sometimes they, uh, there is some subjects that need to be explored a little bit more in detail, like the current one on inflation. So this is the purpose of this presentation, to give my ideas on the inflationary pressures that exist right now in November 2021 and see what are the possible impacts on the markets. In order to explain inflation and its impact on not only on the economy, but on the investments, what I decided to do is to show to the group what happened to inflation in 1970s. And as you can see here, this is inflation. It goes up and there is a recession. Then there is a recession. This is what the gray areas are. Inflation peaks and goes down. Then goes up again and there is a recession. It peaks during the recession and goes down. Then after a period of growth, it goes up. There is a recession, peaks and goes down. The recession ends and then the, the great years of uh, the 80s went, started. Now, so the, the, the important thing is that if inflation rises, 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 it doesn't come down unless there is a period of very slow, it doesn't have to be necessarily a recession, but usually is, has to be a period of period of, of, of very slow growth. That is what it takes to bring inflation down. This is what it takes, this very long recession here, to take inflation down. There is another interesting property. No, let me go one step back. So really what you can think of inflation as a leading indicator, if you wish, because if you, when you see inflation going up, you know bad times are going to take place. Why? Well, you know better than I do that when inflation rise and gas prices rise at the pump, you know, you, you, you can afford less. This time, for instance, we used to fill up the tank for 40 bucks. Now it, it takes $70. So things are getting very expensive. So inflation, what it does, reduces your purchasing power. So here consumers, as they their purchasing power is decreased, they buy less and less. At the end, they said, I stopped buying. I had enough. I don't have enough money. And this is where the recession comes in. There is another interesting property of inflation that it usually goes, starts after a year, or year and a half. This is not that I said that. These are the, the big gods of the business cycles of the 30s and 40s when they developed this, this rationale. So the inflation seems to start after a year, year and a half. Another, another way of looking at it, if you, the policy of the government, like in the 80s, as such that inflation doesn't go up, then there is no need for a recession to take inflation down. That's the interesting feature. So the, the, where the government comes in with its policies is that they are such that inflation stays stable, like in the 80s, there is no need to have a recession. A recession comes only after inflation rises inflation rises and inflation rises. This chart shows the behavior of interest rates during the period as I showed in the previous chart. Here you see interest rates rising, then they peak during a recession, they decline, they rise again, they peak during a recession and then they decline again exactly like the behavior of inflation. The increase in interest rates leads the next recession. The increase in interest rates leads the next recession and 
the increase of interest rates lead the next recession. Like inflation, interest rates start rising after a month, a month, uh, sorry, a year, a year and a half after the expansion starts. And the same thing in this case, they started around a year, year and a half following the beginning of the new expansion. Here they kept on rise, declining, and of course this was probably the greatest periods of economic growth. And uh, because the expansion, the length of the expansion depends on two things, on how stable inflation is during the expansion and how interest rates are stable during the expansion. So the fact that they rose is a warning sign like inflation, that things are not right and eventually will be corrected during a period of very slow growth or recession. The issue, of course, is what is the reason for inflation? There are many, many reasons, but essentially is a, is a monetary phenomenon. In other words, how much money the government and the Federal Reserve, which really is financing the, 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 the government, is what is the growth rate of this money supply? The money supply usually is around growth is between six and eight percent historically, and this growth has generated a, a growth of roughly uh, three percent in in growth of GDP and three percent of inflation. Very rough numbers. The problem is of of the 70s is that this money supply, because of financing required by the great societies and, and, and wars and so on, it started growing at anywhere between 12 and 14 percent. And this is the main reason that you have a big surge in money supply, big surge in money supply, which was followed by, of course, as we saw, rising inflation and rising interest rates. What is the impact of inflation on the financial markets, which is what really matters? Well, as you can see here, this is the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is in the 70s. And as you can see for 12 long years or 13, depending on how you want to measure it, 17, the Dow Jones has not done much. So the problem with inflation is that hurts. Hurts two sectors. The consumers, because they reduce purchasing power, therefore they can afford less. But rising inflation also reduces the profitability of corporations because increasing cost is not good news for companies. It's not a coincidence that during this period of rising and soaring inflation, the dollar, among other things, lost a large amount of value, which is also reflected in the loss of purchasing power of the consumer. Let's see now if the lesson of the 70s applies or repeats in the 2020, 2021, 2022 period. Here we see the economic collapse due to the lockdown of March 2020 and sharp decline in inflation due to the basically consumer stopping to buy things, then as the economy opened up and the economy started growing, inflation started rising quite rapidly. And here we have from con commodity producer prices uh, rising in the, the tune of 22% year over year. Uh, this is 2021 20, period. Uh, here we have uh, producer prices of finished goods uh, around 12% and consumer prices rising at 6.2%. So inflation is rising. There is no question about it as of uh, November 2021. This is the pattern. So what is the impact of, uh, of rising inflation? Well, it doesn't take a PhD in economics to, to see it. Real disposable income declined steadily since March 2021, disposal of personal income is uh, personal income after tax and after inflation. So people started losing money quite, quite rapidly, very sadly to say so. 
Of course, in the, in the 70s, as inflation started rising in 1969, and then 1971, 72, and then 78, 79, what happens? Consumer sentiment, this is the chart, what happened to optimism? That is sharply, sharply down. People didn't feel good. They, were, they didn't have money to buy things because of rising inflation and, and rising gas prices. So what is happening here now in the 20s? Exactly the same thing. Inflation started rising here in this point, and sure enough, as inflation started rising, consumer sentiment started sinking quite rapidly. This is as on November, October, November 2021. Something to, to notice is that the level of consumer sentiment as on November uh, 2021, actually this is October data, are basically at levels that in the past there was a recession. So consumers are not really happy about rising inflation, rightly so. Of course, rising inflation is not an issue for consumers. It's also a problem for business. And here it is. In this period, these are employment cost index. And they more almost doubled, they went to 4.0% growth. So the growth of employment cost index, which is the sum of wages, growth in wages and growth in benefits, is skyrocketing for business. So this growth will labor a big part of the total labor to the total business cost is going to hurt business profitability. So on one side, you have the consumers getting hurt, and now you can see here that business is likely to be hurt as well. What was the reason for the big jump in inflation in uh, 2021? Remember that the expansion started in 2020. Well, guess what? Big, big rise in money supply as in the 70s. The only thing is that this time, money supply, instead of growing between uh, 8 and 12 percent, 13 percent, is growing anywhere between 20 and 30 percent. Historically, the money supply should have been growing, as I mentioned before, between 6 and 8 percent. Now it's 24, 30 percent. So, no surprising, after a year, year and a half, inflation started rising. That's the problem. Too much money printed by the Fed to finance all the debt issued by the government to, quote unquote, provide the stimulus to the economy. The stimulus will, will pay the, for the stimulus in loss of purchasing power. So it's a zero sum game. Basically, this is what is happening, sorry to say. The people who devised and developed business cycle concept in the 30s and 40s found out that there are three types of economic indicators. The leading indicators, coincident indicators, that bas this basically is the economy, and then the lagging indicator, which is basically this is inflation and interest rates. And what we have seen is that the coincident, the economy expands, then inflation rises and causes consumer sentiment to decline and the economy to slow down. The lagging, when will the leading indicators or the economy expand? It will expand only after inflation declines. When inflation starts declining, then you see the leading indicators and the economy expanding again. Then after a, a year, a year and a half, and possibly longer, then inflation starts rising again, the rising in the again, consumer sentiment declines. That's bad news. There is less purchasing because the loss of the loss of purchasing power until when? Until the inflation declines. When inflation declines, then we have the positive, what is called peer positive feedback, that consumer confidence improves, the economy improves, and then after a year and a half or two, inflation rises again.
So how does, what, the, what is the implication of the current cycle? That inflation has been rising. Consumer confidence, this has to decline enough to hurt the economy, to create a very sh slowdown so that eventually, as in the 70s, inflation will decline. And we saw in inflation in, in the 70s that inflation does not reach a top until the economy slows down quite meaningful, meaningfully, and in the 70s usually was a recession. So this is what is ahead of us. By the way, this is a, an article that I wrote for Seeking Alpha in October 2020, and it gives you a good idea of, of the way I saw things developing, which is very close to what I've been saying in this presentation. I won't be bothering you with the details, but if you go to Seeking Alpha and search for this, for this article, you we can read all the, the details. By the way, this is a reminder that I am the editor of the Peter Deck Portfolio Strategy and Management, and uh, you can get a free subscription, no credit card needed. That would be very welcome if you can want to do that. I wrote a book, Profiting in Bull of Bear Market, and other two other books on easy ways to beat the market with ETFs and investing wisely. It is easier than you think. Th this book was commissioned, by the way, by Megro Hill because they like what I, I wrote on my website, by the way. I'm, I'm very proud of it, <laughs> okay. 